Hi everyone, this video is going to cover dummy coding and regression, specifically for R. And so, what is dummy coding? Well, dummy coding is this factorial coding system that creates pairwise comparisons for categorical variables. And so essentially what happens is it takes some control group and compares it to every other group. Okay. Unlike ANOVA, where we control, we compare every group to every other group, this focuses on control groups to every other group. Um, and you can actually do that in ANOVA by just not doing all the pairwise comparisons, but this is actually built into the regression. Where with ANOVA, we ran an overall analysis and then did some post hoc tests. The post hoc tests are sort of included as part of the regression. So I'm actually going to go back and use an ANOVA example and just kind of compare and contrast here to show you. And so in R, what will happen is the group who's, con who's coded as number one, which is usually the um, um, alphabetical group, now we can reorder that if we want, is considered the control group. And we're going to get levels minus one comparisons for our dummy coded variables. So that's important. I like to ask that question on quizzes. How many groups are you going to get? If you have four levels, you'll only get three because we have control group versus two, control group versus three, and control group versus four. And so that's why there's only three. Okay. So um, I give you an example. If you have four levels, Catholic, Jewish, Protestant, or other, you'll get three predictors. Catholic versus Jewish, Catholic versus President, Catholic versus other, because you can't do Catholic versus Catholic. Okay. And that's the same thing as a pairwise post hoc t test. Um, but obviously, that's not doing all of them. If you wanted, let's say, Jewish versus Protestant, you would need to refactor that variable, reorder the levels so that Jewish was first, um, and then rerun your analysis. So we're going to do this a very simple example of excellent, fair, and poor, and number of friends from um, undergraduate statistics example. And so uh, we're essentially saying, does your health predict friends? Now, this health variable is kind of moderately continuous, but we're going to treat it as categorical for the purposes of this example. So in theory, we only have one predictor of health. But because it has multiple levels, we're going to have a set of predictors, and we have three of them. So we're going to end up with two comparisons, right? Poor versus fair, poor versus excellent, or whatever order we want to do them in. So this is actually a multiple linear regression because we have two predictors. And we're going to do this simultaneously, meaning everything goes in at once. And I'm going to specifically show you power for this because power for um, regression with categorical predictors can be tricky if you're not used to it. So we're going to do come down over here and pick F test. Click on this one. Predict linear multiple regression, fixed model R squared deviation from zero. Because we're doing uh, multiple regression with more than one predictor, R squared deviation from zero means we're looking at the overall model and not one particular predictor. Then we're going to have to estimate some sort of effect size. So we're going to use R squared. In this particular example, I'm going to use a large effect size of 0.25. So I'm going to hit determine. Um, from the squared multiple correlation. So this is where we can put in R squared. Hit calculate transfer to main. So that translated R squared to F squared. Um, A is always a 0.05 for our big important rule we're using in this class. Um, you may use alpha, a different alpha, but for this class we're using 0.05. For power we're going to use 0.80 as industry standard. We're going to have two predictors. We have three levels which means we get two predictors. So maybe poor to fair and, um, excuse me, poor to excellent. So two here. So that tells me I need 33 participants. Okay. So we would need 33 people to find a large effect size here. That's totally doable. I have like eight in this data set, but 33 would be a, a reasonable number. Now, I'm going to kind of skip data screening, which is a little unusual for me in my videos. Um, but I think it, it's more useful to look at in a complete multiple linear regression. This is really just about dummy coding. Okay. So we're going to set up that regression by using our LM function. DV is predicted by our tilde, the IV. Hi, puppy. OK, go away. Okay. I'm going to save that as output. So I'm going to come over here to R, set up my working directory, and load that data set. In my data set, you'll notice that I have my DV, which is friends, and my group variable, which is factor. So factor with three levels here. It has made the 
um, alphabetic one first. So excellent here is gonna be our comparison group if I leave that variable the way it is. And that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So down here I've example, given you an example where I refactored it, did it in a different order. But if I wanted to leave X in as my comparison group, I could do um, DV is predicted by IV, data set equals my master. Now let me look at that summary. So I'm actually gonna come over here because it's a little easier to read. And you'll see here that it gave me two predictors. And those are my two pairwise comparisons. Now the name that it sticks here on the end is the name of the comparison group. Um, and so you just have to remember that the other group is excellent. So this first one is fair to excellent, and the second one is excellent to poor. Okay. So first question, is my overall model significant? Well, I'm gonna get that down here from this F statistic line. So F with two and eight degrees of freedom. So a very small sample size is 5.13, my p-value is 0.04, but my R squared is 0.56. So that is a big effect. Okay, that's more than double what we predicted a minute ago. And what that means is that overall, this group variable, which has multiple predictors, this group variable overall gives me um, a significant prediction of their health. Okay. And so that, because it's categorical, means that there are differences um, in the groups in health based on the number of friends. Right? That sounds suspiciously like ANOVA because it is. Okay, so let's essentially overall there are differences between groups, but in a regression framework, I can think about that as these variables predict the number, the health based on the number of friends that you have. Second thing we're gonna do is look at are the individual predictors significant? You'll see the same format when you watch the other regression videos. We talk about overall and then into predictors. So group fair is our, is our comparison between excellent and fair groups. And the B value is that mean difference. And it's not significant. Okay. But the mean difference is two, two points on your health. Okay, group poor is the comparison between excellent and poor, and it's also not different. And that's si very similar to the effects we found when we did ANOVA. But what about fair to poor? Well, if I wanted to know fair to poor, I would need to reorganize this bad boy. So I'm gonna put poor and then fair and excellent. This makes more sense numerically. So I'm gonna refactor that variable. And I ran a table just to make sure I had the name spelled correctly. And I could relabel these to make them pretty on a graph. You'll see we're coming up on this graph here in a minute. That's so why I just reran the whole thing and made sure I did it right. Okay. I'm gonna run that same analysis, but now switch to group two here. And you'll see that my F statistic doesn't change. If it changed, you did something wrong because the F, the overall model is not shouldn't change. All we're doing is changing which is our comparison group. But now we see that fair to poor is significant, okay. and that's why um, that's one reason um, the overall model is important. But now we can see when which predictor is doing the most work. Okay. All right, and I showed you all my factoring here. So group to fair is our fair group compared to our poor group, and it is significant. And we actually did this um, example as ANOVA. So if I compare the regression statistics to the ANOVA statistics, they're the same. Look, eta squared, so proof that R squared and eta squared are the same thing. Additionally, proof that ANOVA is a special type of regression. And so I've got all the blah, blah, blah on how to test that here using easy ANOVA, which if you've been watching our videos, you'll know. Um, and so that's where I got my numbers from, but be sure you're looking at the NOVA output and not Levine's test output. Okay. All right, if I want to plot this, I could plot and do a dot plot. Um, let's get to that in just a second. So how do I interpret these categorical predictors? Well, that's where the plots come in. So let's go ahead and make some um, GG plots here. I'm gonna do my cleanup fact. Um, I'm gonna make this as um, our traditional ANOVA graph. And it never fails that my little dog, by the time I get done recording, is like antsy. So that's the clicking that you're hearing. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna make this in my traditional ANOVA graph style, where I've got my error bars and my means for each group. So poor to fair here um, is different. So the people who are in fair health conditions have more friends than people who are in excellent health. Um, we got a lot of error though. And the people who are in poor health have very few friends. But I could also make this as a 
geom point plot. And you'll notice that that gives me the same effect. But now I can see each individual person. So what's happening in a categorical prediction is that these four people are being compared to these three people. And so it's essentially the B value is the subtraction between the two groups. So it's how much the mean is changing between poor and fair. How much the mean is changing between poor and excellent. And then fair and excellent. So it depends on what order you do the subtraction in. Uh, and so sometimes I think people, it's hard to interpret these B values. Let me just go back up here. Um, because what does three point mean? Well, the difference in means is 3.8 points. So this is a difference in health score based on which group was subtracted first, but I'm really bad at which way it comes first. So essentially, I always make myself a nice cute plot so I can just visualize it. So now I don't have to remember if poor is subtracted first or fair is subtracted first. I can just say poor is lower than fair. Look at figure one, right? So we always wanna visualize our data and really understand it. And so instead of just telling a reviewer or, or a reader, hey, the B value for poor to fair is 2.3 points, um, allow them to see that data better and say, well, here's the B value, but the important part here is that poor is less than fair. So we're creating a, um, a visual interpretation of our data as well as showing with you know, whatever significance test we're interested in, if things are different or not. And one thing we'll cover in the multiple regression video is how to add um, effect sizes to all of this so that you can um, talk about the importance of each predictor as well as the significance if you're interested in doing a traditional statistical test. Okay. So wrapping that up, this is how we interpret dummy coded variables. Remembering that dummy coded variables are like doing pairwise t-tests in ANOVA.